Thomas and my good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Our director, John Wolf, has uh, asked me to take my gum out of my mouth, but let me tell you something. If I'm not going to smoke, I'm going to have something to chomp on, so I'm going to do it for, for just a while. If anyone's got any better ideas of what I can do on? Let me introduce, let me introduce our guests, all right? Let me introduce first at our number one loudmouth, Mr. John F. Bonsoff III. Thank you. Let me tell you, let me tell you about Mr. Bonsoff the third. In 1967, he filed a complaint with the FCC against smoking ads, wanted, uh, as a matter of fact, to place one ad uh, against smoking for every four pro-smoking ads that ran. All right, we know as a result that smoking ads came off radio and television at home base. At uh, home base with us is Dr. Ernest Vandenhag. He is professor of law and jurisprudence at Fordham University. He believes smoking is a matter of individual liberty. We've met before, haven't we? Let me uh, show you how much these two gentlemen love each other. Uh, they are both very close and personal friends. If you watch the monitor at home, you'll see uh, the last meeting between these two gentlemen. Please. Now, unfortunately, my opponent is sitting here smoking. The smoke is going in my face. He's doing it in violation of D.C. fire laws, so I'm putting it out because it is a violation of D.C. fire laws. Okay, no violation. Now, hold on, gentlemen. Yeah, gentlemen, hold on. Self-defense, That was self-defense. It's going to be a hell of a night, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> Let me, uh... Let me start right off. Lord, Professor Bonsoff. That's the first Let time he's had that's the first time he's had the guts to face me on a television show since then, despite more than a dozen invitations. So I'm glad he's got his guts up. Oh. You think it takes takes guts guts to face him? No, I just have to overcome my disgust. And that's not too easy. <laughs> Professor. <laughs> Professor Bonsoff. Professor Bonsoff, uh, you're the guy responsible for taking cigarette ads off television now. And getting those smoking sections on airplanes and getting the smoking ban starting April 23rd. Your latest crusade, your latest crusade is to drive 75 million Americans into the closet by banning cigarette smoking in public, right? Not at all. Not as at all. long as they don't smoke near people who don't want to be smoked on, I've got no problem with it. So you're not Lord, as you've said several times on your show, there are certain things which should be restricted to consenting adults in private, and I think having to breathe tobacco smoke is one of them. All right, let me ask you a question. How about when you walk into a restaurant if they have one section for smokers and the other section for non-smokers? As long as there's reasonable ventilation, they're separated, that's fine, and 86% of the smokers agree with that. All right, and so do I. Good. All right, so Good do I. Common, How about on a train, these uh, MTA uh, jerks, uh, with the fact that... Uh, you can't have you can't have a car for smokers and uh, another car for non-smokers. Why why would you be opposed to that? I have no objection whatsoever to having separate cars for smokers and people who spit and chew and people who want to ride naked. Well, and so that's on. a little slippery. Wait a, wait a minute. That's not the issue, Mort. The issue is whether federal taxpayers should be paying extra money for people who can't wait to get home to do it, and they have to do it on a train. If the smokers, the chewers and spitters, the people who want to get drunk, the people who want to ride naked, want to pay for that car, be my guest. So he not only, he not only heads up the executive action for smokers and healthy, heads up the executive committee for taking off your pants and riding too, huh? Hey, well, let me ask, let me ask uh, Dr. Vandenhock. What about the Surgeon General's report stating that other people smoking may be hazardous to your health? Well, I think if you smoke yourself, it significantly increases the risk to your health. Mm -hmm. The statistics do not show that passive smoking does any damage whatsoever, except under very special conditions. The Surgeon General is a very nice gentleman. He's a very good pediatric orthopedic surgeon. He doesn't know much about statistics, and he's a zealot. He's, in, in many other respects, a zealot. Now, you see, the, 
the risk of other people of breathing your smoke. No, it's not a health risk. I may be annoyed. Well, how about a response from Professor uh, Van I'd, I'd like to ask a question, then. If you don't agree with the Surgeon General, National Academy of Sciences, World Health Organization, American Cancer Society, U.S. Public Health Service, American Medical Association, American Lung Association, American Heart Association, half a dozen more I won't mention, all agree on one thing, one thing. Breathing other people's smoke causes lung cancer. Thousands of non-smokers die each year from that lung cancer. Now, where do you get... You are expertise, Professor. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know as a fact that non-smokers die from other people's smoke from lung cancer? What statistics prove that? Non-smokers. It's more than statistics. We have, we, the scientific and medical community, have identified more than a dozen substances in tobacco smoke known to cause cancer. We put on a rat's back, they get cancer. We know that it causes cancer in smokers. I'm sure even you admit that. We know that the smoke gets into people's lungs because we can measure the carbon monoxide in their blood, the nicotine in their, in their urine. And you, so what would make this, you think? and you have tracked this and found that people who died from lung cancer died from someone else's smoke. You can tell me that emphatically. There are 16 can studies. Can you tell me that, that emphatically? Yes, I am. You know you're a liar. <laughs> That's the same, that's the same scientific bull that you guys have been passing around for years. You can prove that smoking does not do anything for your health. I'll guarantee you you're right on that. Well, I you can can't prove, the evidence you can't prove it my cigarettes bother and give anyone else cancer if they don't smoke themselves. Well, if you're dumb enough to believe that, I hope oh, you're stupid enough to say it. You're stupid. I made it through one cigarette segment, all right? One down, five to go. Will I or won't I? Ten bucks, ten bucks, ten bucks. I don't know, all right. Next, does the government have the right to tell you where to smoke? No, come back. Still not lit. Still not late. We're going to make it through the show. I promise you this time. Smokers' rights we're talking about tonight, all right? And probably some of the rights of non-smokers, too. We are joined now by, let's see, I believe we have a gentleman over at this uh, loudmouth, David St. James. Is that correct, right. David? Right. All right, sir. Now, you're, a, you're an author. Is that correct? Right. Right. Before I go into uh, any further uh, discussion about, uh, about uh, David St. James and discrimination, Let's take a look at some very famous American smokers, all right? While we talk about uh, smoking makes people second-class citizens. Betty Davis, second-class, uh-uh. Can uh -huh. you tell how many of them died of lung cancer? Well, let me tell you. Attack? Yeah, I will. Hold on a second. Uh, Hold on a second. There's, there's Betty Davis is still alive. She's 88, all right? <laughs> Here we have Humphrey Bogart, who died of a stroke, all right? All right? Here we have Joan Crawford, who died of a heart attack at All 70, at 71. Smoking. All links smoking. to smoking. You're right. You're right. Here we have, here we have Albert Einstein. How old was he when he died, sir? I don't know. 91. Yes. Another man, another man who passed away from smoking. And last but not least, Franklin Delano Roosevelt who passed away because he had too many pablum pukers around him, all right? So there you go. Another smoker. So those are the second-class well, citizens. That's your hero, John Wayne. He died of multiple lung cancer from yes. smoking. Yes, he did, as a and matter of fact. how about Joe Brenner, who's running the ad saying he wished he didn't smoke because he died of lung yes, cancer Yes, and how smoking. about the guy who was on Perry Mason's show who died of lung cancer? And how about your uh -huh. co-host, Larry King? Larry King is still alive. Yeah, but he quit Although smoking. Although his ratings he had his are heart somewhat attack, dead. didn't he? No. The anxiety of those diseases, whether they smoke or not, it helps to have a scapegoat. If you, if somebody uh, smokes, the American it's medical great to have community a needs a scapegoat to keep you running your tail off, they to don't. fill the doctor's pockets, to buy their Mercedes Benzes and go to the country club. <laughs> I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you this is any good for you. Sure as hell isn't. And I expect it to cut my life expectancy probably down to about 90. 
All right? The but medical you know, nevertheless, there's other the things that are worse for you. Driving a car when you're drunk, a hell of a lot more deadly. Well, how right? about your teenage daughters? There's a recent study right here in Long Island Medical Center says exposure to parents' tobacco smoke for as little as two hours, high school athletes, the healthiest people you might expect, significantly impairs their lung function, lung development, and increases respiratory disease. Do you smoke around your teenage daughter? Yeah, sure do. Mm -hmm. You think that's why? Yeah, sure do. <laughs> Well, you're not risking just your own life. You're also because risking they don't, they, they, they make their own decision as whether to smoke, all right? No, no, I'm uh, talking about when they my, have to smoke because you are smoking near them. More. Well, I smoke in my living room and in my bedroom, all right? As long as you don't smoke near I them. Smoke. I don't go into their bedrooms and smoke, all right? So. There are medical studies that show that there is absolutely no connection with people smoke and other people's lung cancer. Absolutely none. You want to cite a few the of medi well, the cite medical, one for me. The medical establishment Cite one for me. He gave me a bunch cite, of BS. Now, you give me at least one. Found that, why don't you? Give me one. Go ahead. No, right, go an ahead. organization, not a go study. Oh, I can't remember all these names. I wrote them down. Th there are medical benefits to smoking. You never hear about the medical benefits. No. You'll never hear. And this I don't have to look at. Smoking, reduce, uh, smoking helps combat colitis. But you never hear about that. Colitis Smoke. when you when you have the problem with the bathroom in your, in your ulcer. Uh -huh. now, that's why uh, doctors are prescribing it all the time, right? Doctors don't. Do, in the 1930s, the doctors said that smoking begat more daughters than sons. You know, they have you looked at any evidence? And that was because sir? they didn't want a bunch of girls out in the field. The doctors were saying it for their own purposes. Yeah, let's it's talk about 1970s, 1980 evidence. You got any well, let me hear. Let me hear. I heard there. your evidence. Zip it. Let me hear from ahead. <laughs> The New England Law Journal. So, quote, quote okay. a medical study, all right? He, he quoted oh, a medical yeah, study. Right he quoted a medical study, all right? The guy okay. with the big mouth and the small brain okay. quoted a medical study. Okay, in the November 1986 issue of the New England Journal of Medicine. All right, I'll accept that. It says that cigarette smoking protects women against endometrial cancer by as much as 50%. Yeah, because it makes them age prematurely. They die quicker, that's why, you idiot. In Science Magazine. It says... In Science Magazine, it says Parkinson's disease is combated by cigarette smoke. They don't know Surgeon why, General but there's something in cigarette that smoking smoke. Aids Surgeon in Parkinson's General is the guy who warned us about the swine flu epidemic. Yeah. The pigs didn't let even me, uh, get it. Let me come back here to Professor Bonzoff, all right? Uh, professor, uh, as a professor of law, can you honestly tell me that stipulating a job applicant to be a non-smoker, that that's constitutional? Well, the U.S. Court of Appeals just so held a government, a government fired a worker. Hey, try state area. Nobody does it fresher than Papa. All right, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for getting out here. We've got uh, Professor Van Hogg. You wanted to say something before we got going with this segment. Yeah. Two things. First, it is perfectly true that passive smoking is toxic like all smoke is. But the effect is so insignificant compared to all the pollutants that are in the air that no serious person other than the Surgeon General takes it seriously. <laughs> now, uh, one other thing. When I go to a restaurant and a see... A restroom? Yeah, a restaurant. A restaurant, okay. And he knows the difference between the two more. And see a fat man stuff himself, it gives me high. But I have never... I have never... Are you saying that Mr. Bonhoeff III is a fat man who stuffs himself? I leave that to you. All I want to say is, I have never asked for a special section. Fat men to be confined to that section so that yeah, I won't but, get but me high. Yeah, but the fat man isn't going to throw up on you or anything. But he gives me high. I can't look at his stuffing himself without getting high. Oh, well, uh, we, we can get into that. I want to introduce... Is that the level of logic that you uh, teach at Fordham Law School, sir? Let me introduce... Please, please, let me introduce the lady, all right? Uh, Regina, uh, you are... Uh, well, tell me about the average age. You're with a group called GAS, right? Mm -hmm. What is GAS? This is New Jersey GAS, the group against smoking pollution. Where? What does it stand for? Group against smoking pollution. I see. Okay. And we're the non-smokers' rights movement. We think, you know, all this talk about freedom, what about the freedom of non-smokers? Okay. And, you know, what, even if secondhand smoke weren't harmful, it seems to me there's a question of freedom. You know, I'm inclined to believe that vitamins are useful for health. 
But I wouldn't come and jam vitamins down your throat against your will. Mm -hmm. It just seems like common courtesy that you shouldn't inflict your smoke down my throat against my will. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think I should inflict it down anyone's throat against your will. That's why, that's why I think, uh, like Professor Bonhoeff does, I think there should be non-smoking cars in a, uh, in a train. Uh, I think the most ridiculous new rule I've heard is this two-hour flights. There will be no smoking on airlines, less than two-hour floats flights, but longer than two hours there can be. Well, now, that's really, well, why don't you tell that's me really why stupid, so ridiculous. all right? If a guy's flying for five hours and everyone's smoking, you're, you're involved in the smoke for five hours versus two. I think it should be the other way around. Well, let me explain very simple terms so you'll understand all it. Right. The problem with banning it on long flights is he that he's, clever. he's been insulting me all the time. I could I've park my so. brain and be half right. as smart as him. <laughs> all right. What are you a professor of, incidentally? I teach law. Do you? And I sue bastards like you. You <laughs> sue bastards. Answer the question right. quickly. Right. If you try to ban smoking on long flights, there are a lot of smokers who find they can't go for three or four or five hours without a real problem. You may be one of them. But two hours or less, I mean, you do it every time you go to a movie theater, if you go to church, if you go to but a courtroom. Yeah, but you're doing that for a convenience. It's a compromise. Right? Wait no. a second, you're doing it no. as a convenience. No. If you really are interested in protecting the health of the non-smoker, you're going to make it for the five-hour flight and the hell with the 25.7 percent. In you five say. years, that would be true as it is in other countries. Today, we're, we're stopping smoking on 80 percent of the flights without any serious inconvenience to the smoker because all you have to do is do without it for two hours. And even you can do that. I'm sure you What can. about the new cigarette that's coming out that is smokeless? As you said before, it's also bullshit. There is no such thing there as is a smokeless such a thing. cigarette. I have smoked it, sir. All right? Oh, you have. I have tested it, have sir. Have you analyzed you the who air are coming so out of it? God smart. Don't have a brain in your head. There's no smoking. Have you analyzed it, Mark? I'm not a scientist. Are you? Yes, You're I not am. even a good lawyer. You're nothing. Please. When I light this cigarette, pal, it'll be near you. Dump water on me, and I'll send you through the back of the street. Let me right, speak now, Mort, to Doug I, Jones. Mort, I Shut had up. an MIT degree. Shut up. Turn his help. microphone off. Doug, I want to hear you. Doug. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Come Doug. on. Shut up. Come on, big mouth. Right. Doug, let's show a picture of Doug. Let's show a... Don't ever bet. Don't ever bet I chicken out flesh face. Now, Doug. Doug, would you explain... Would you explain to me what happened to you on the MTA? Let's see a picture. There's a picture of Doug getting himself arrested and a summons. All right. Now, now tell us, now tell us, Doug, exactly what happened. Uh, we were involved with a, uh, we've got a loosely <laughs> organized group of uh, commuters on the Metro North uh, commuter railroad. Uh, I'm not sure how, how much detail we've got to, to go into, uh, but there was a uh, congressionally mandated uh, requirement that Long Island Railroad ban smoking in order to maintain its federal funding. Uh, the MTA, in its infinite wisdom, uh, and with a bureaucratic compulsion for uniformity, uh, decided that they'd also ban uh, sm smoking on Metro North, which is the other now that commuter is all rail cars, railway. right? They did not reserve a car for smokers. There was before. They eliminated the policy of, of, of one. Yeah, and but was it half a car? Was it half a car or was it a whole car? It's an entire car. Okay. Uh, How about you? Are, are you? are you a smoker? I'm a non-smoker. What, do you, of, what do you think about what they just did? I think it's great. It's freedom of choice. They okay. have a right to smoke if they want to. We were not asking for a lot. A separate car. You have steel doors. How can that be secondary smoke if you're on your own? We have to pay for it. We tax we pay all for pay trains. For it, lady. Oh, we fine. If you want to have Excuse smokers, me. We, we pay taxes through the purchase of, of, of the cigarettes, which are heavily yeah. taxed. And the cigarette taxes are... The cigarette taxes are...
asbestos, don't come near the covering all of the death and disease and fires caused by smoking. If you want to smoke on the train and you're willing to pay more to clean it up and to take care of the fires, yeah, but I say go ahead, it's your own well, choice. It's not costing the taxpayers any more to have a smoking section on a train. Yes, it does, no, it because doesn't. those cars have more fires, they have more ventilation problems, they have to be cleaned more frequently. How many of you folks have been on a train that caught fire? Oh, more, Let me see if you have. Uh, yeah, well, there's fun. another very simple reason I'm sure right. you'll understand it, and that is that a smoker can get on a train and refrain from smoking for an hour or two, but of all the seats and the no smoking cars are full, the non-smoker can't get into the smoking car and refrain from breathing for two hours. Well, sure they can. Well, the, M the, MTA, the MTA has raised all of these issues, or nearly all of them. Uh -huh. And, and I, stand up. I met with the president of Metro North yesterday, and I said, okay, show us your data that indicate that uh, people have to stand in non-smoking cars when there are seats available in, in, in smoking cars. Show us your data, uh, or show us your calculations of exactly how much you're going to save in maintenance costs. Show us, show us the, 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 the uh, opinion What do he poll. show you? What do he show you? Nothing. Nothing. Showed him the drawers. What do he show you? Why do he have to show you anything? Because we ride Because I pay to ride on the damn train. All right, there's a lawsuit going on. I'm involved in it. You want to join it? Join it. We'll fight it out in court. Why should you come in and show you anything? We're not fighting it out in court. Who are you? What's the lawsuit, Professor? Wait a second. What's the lawsuit? The lawsuit is some, to, uh, some tobacco companies going in there and arguing it's illegal to, to do this. And we're contesting. The issue will be and decided in court. The company is five people, and four of us, are, three yeah, of us are here. Yeah, and you're all being supported by a tobacco we're industry. We're being supported by Philip Morris. I yeah, would not Philip have signed, Morris. I would have not have signed onto the suit unless the, the the support of Philip Morris were made public. You have to wonder about the intelligence of smokers who think that tobacco companies are their friends. The tobacco companies lie to them. They get hooked as kids. They take them to court, and they say, you smoked, dummy. You're going to die of lung cancer. It's your own fault. And then they pose and the as tobacco companies are right to say that. And they right to say that. So many old people. Why do you think so? Morris is supporting you in smoking more. They want to make more money from you. Aren't you tired of giving them your money and your life? I'll tell you. First, I will say I was the first one to quit this can't do much spring. About it. But I'll be damned if I'm going to quit until we win this thing. Okay. See you in court. We've, we've, won, won every, we've won everyone so far. Well, you guys haven't won one. Come into court well, won them all so well. far. You haven't won the ones where you get these emaciated poor people who've been smoking for 50 years who are dying, who then decide because some clever, crafty, lowbrow lawyer like yourself says, come on, get you into court, and we'll collect from the tobacco company because you're dying I'm from cigarettes. I'm not doing that litigation. You haven't done I win mine. Well, I don't know about halfway the Halfway through, still not one smoke. Coming up next, smoking in your house. We're not resolving a damn thing, all right, if I'm yelling at Banoff all the time and Vanden Hogg is screaming at Regina, so let me go back and see if we can uh, ask the professor. You claim that my smoking, all right, causes your medical insurance to rise. Would you explain that one for me? Sure. There have been about half a dozen studies which indicate that smokers suffer far more days lost from work, far more need for medical care, and therefore we have persuaded the National Association of Insurance Commissioners to recommend that, not, that smokers pay more for their health insurance, just as they've long done so for their life insurance. <laughs> yeah. Persuade the NAIC. Has been Wait a second. Let's let the I go. persuaded the NAIC to do it on three grounds: smoking, overweight, and lack of control of high blood pressure. So I am not excluding myself. When it went to the federal government, though, the federal government ruled against it on weight and high blood pressure. They said because not all me, the senators said, and congressmen are a bunch of fat That's why they ruled against it. Now. You're telling me, Professor, you're telling me that the insurance rates, yours are raised because I smoke, all right? That's right. How come, how come you, you get insurance for people who don't smoke and you get a lower rate? That's right. That's you right. don't, more, again, it's very simple, but I think you're misunderstanding. All right. For years, life insurance companies have charged different rates, but it's only very recently that health insurance, you understand everything, life is for how long you live, life health is when is you get how sick, long you when you're in impotent. Right. Thank, thank you very much for telling me that. 
Regina. Now, for the height of stupidity, some families are suing the tobacco companies like we talked about before for killing off their loved ones, all right? It wasn't the president of Philip Morris who forced me to smoke or RJR or any of them. I took it on because I'm, I'm weak and stupid when it comes to cigarettes. You said it, we did. That's right, I did. Because when I say it, it's okay. You Morris, said it. Morris, you're a dick. Bow! <laughs> Morris, you're a dick. Your producer agrees. We're not going to be discussing it. the suits on this show. Shut up. Can you zip it? You're not in your classroom. Can't you keep your I'm promises? I'm speaking to other people. Can't you people. keep your promises, I'm sir? speaking to other there people. There's a suit going on, and he agreed. We're not going to be discussing the suits. We got plenty to do with your alleged smoker's right. We're not, we're not discussing the suit. I'm asking Regina. You don't uh, think you're discussing the suit? Did I mention any <laughs> suit? <laughs> Regina. Without, without specifying, without specifying any particular continuing litigation, all uh, right? Can you tell us if it really in your mind you believe? that any individual has the right, after willfully smoking on their own for any number of years, to turn around and sue a company which manufactures and distributes cigarette tobacco. Would yes. I guess? Yes, I think they should. You know, I believe... <laughs> you know, I believe in a lot of freedom and a lot of responsibility, and certainly smokers have got to take some responsibility. But when you look at the issue, when you look at the fact that the tobacco companies are lying to people, that tobacco is highly addictive, more addictive than cocaine, that it's our most heavily advertised product, that people don't get adequate health information, and that most people start when they're kids. It just doesn't seem quite an even battle. Nobody else can sell a product that kills you and gets away with it. And when you consider the tobacco companies are making all the money... The distillers do it all the time. Marijuana is an advertised at all, and it's probably much more harmful. It seems and to me the people who've popular. been making the money There's should... There's no all... warning. And people smoke it anyway. So what has advertising to do it with it? And Herr Professor, do you think that makes them uh, immune from lawsuits? For the rest of us. Uh, I'm sorry, Professor Bonhoff asked Professor something. That makes You're immune. suggesting marijuana, so you think they should be immune from lawsuits? You think if somebody could show that they died from smoking a marijuana cigarette, they wouldn't have a cause of action? If Against so, you whom? better step down from the faculty of Florence. Against who? He doesn't go to Columbia. I came from Columbia. They wouldn't have me at Columbia. But, but, I figured you were from Columbia. <laughs> you did. I figured that. A bunch of weak kneed, lily livered pablum pupils. I got a Professor yeah. Bonner. Are you going to come a, over and light I, up that I, cigarette on the air so we can find out and call your bluff? Would I what? Are you going to light up that cigarette and blow up the smoke in my face on the air so we can call I'm, your bluff? I'm making every attempt. Not to like this. He makes a threat huh? and then he backs down. Isn't that nice? I don't. Hey, pal. Hey, fat mouth. I don't back down from nothing, especially from <laughs> that's piled that high. <laughs> let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. All right. Let me let me ask a professor a question. I sit down in a restaurant. And some emaciated, mousy, macrobiotic berry nibbler asks me not to light up my cigarette, all right? I'm smoking. This guy's sitting there. He doesn't smoke. He nibbles berries. He takes health food, sprouts. He looks like he's going to croak into a box at any minute. And I got to worry about my cigarette hurting him? <laughs> no more, but there's a lot of smokers a lot bigger than you are, a lot of non-smokers a lot bigger than you are, and maybe you better worry about them. I don't well, worry I about wouldn't. them. But I don't go through life worrying, worrying, all right? Maybe you Only are. a guy who is upset in his mind like you goes through life, life worrying all the time. Well, more I you always worry. I happen to think, despite it all, you're probably a reasonably courteous guy, I am. and you'd prefer, when you go to a restaurant, to have a smoking section so you can light up without right. interfering with others, right. and the, the non-smokers have right. their section, and that's all I said all that I'm at the beginning for. of the show. We're agreeing to I it. I said that at the beginning of the show. All right, I don't know. I'm feeling a little weak. I'm feeling a little weak. Maybe I, uh, maybe I can make it through uh, one more segment. One more segment. All right. Can I get it through one more segment? Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what. Tell you what. We're going to go to the audience and see what they have to say next. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
as always, as always, you can bet that the audience, you at home, our folks here tonight have more answers than I have, Professor Bonhoff, uh, Professor Vandenhoek, all of us put together. So we're going to go to the audience. Let me start with this beautiful young lady right here. Your first name. Your first name standing next to that horny professor. Kathy. Kathy. Hi, Kathy. What'd you want to say? Well, first of all, I like your red socks. Yeah, I got them to match your red uh, thing. Um, it's not that I don't think that smokers are entitled or not entitled to their right to smoke. However, I have this theory about what should be done with them. They should be all sent to Venus with all the other hedonists amongst the haze and the ruined ozone layer. Yeah, Who won't get cancer? At least I'm a, I, I won't get cancer. If you went to Venus? Well, no, I don't. I, is this on? Is this on? I, I don't want to. I don't want to insult you. You know, evening's young. <laughs> <laughs> I might get lucky. <laughs> What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Hi, I'm Tom Ryan. This is Joanne Sarna. We've been working with Doug in the protest on the MTA thing. Um, so far tonight, we've heard that 26% of the people in the United States smoke. Yeah. On Metro North, it was 15%. We wanted 10% of the cars. It was a bureaucratic nicety to do away with it. We submitted petitions. We sued them. We're going to sue them in Connecticut. You haven't we, won, we though, went, have you? No, we haven't won. Are you going to pursue it? Are you going to finally Doug say, did, you're going to pursue it or finally say, hell, I can make it through one hour without a butt? Well, it's not the point whether or not I can make it through one hour without the butt. It's who decides that. We had one smoking car. It's worked forever. One of the things that we did to be polite was to go to Chief But he's not saying that there shouldn't be one smoking car, right? That's not his contention. That's not... contention is only that the federal government shouldn't have to subsidize. If you want a, if you want a smoking car, if people want to have a car where they can play a lot of question on Metro North, only on the Long Island Railroad. And you people keep talking about that, and it's a lie. It's what, only the Long Island Railroad that is affected by this. Be very precise. The Long Island Railroad. The Long Island Railroad what about is affected by these federal subsidies. It not That's Metro right. North. No. So they have made an independent us. decision that in their business judgment, it is not a good idea to have a smoking car. Now, Mort is a great conservative. He ought to support that. They ought to be able to make a decision whether to have a smoking car, a drinking car, a movie car. What about the people? Don't they get to make any decisions? Well, that's our problem. Is it always we the think this is a legislative the situation. If the smokers want to make their voice known, they, they don't ride the railroad. They can pick it. They can do whatever they want. This is a democracy or a republic? It's both. Is it? Do you know the difference? Oh, I do indeed. But if it's, if it's, a, if it's a democracy, all right, then, of course, I say that that 75% who don't want to smoke can vote the rest of us out of ever having a smoke. No, I say that, too. More but, however, no, if it's a republic, agree. we have our own individual rights, don't we? More, the surveys from more, Metro you know, North Ride... If you looked at the stuff, there is no right to smoke. Can I say There's something? You've been up here for 45 minutes, John. I've been out there for two months fighting this. Yeah, but I know what I'm talking about, and you're losing, buddy. The survey that have been... Be careful what you say. This is a guy who loves to sue. Uh, like most lawyers, they have no talent other than suing. Right? The surveys that were done... Quickly now, quickly. The surveys that were done before the ban went into effect said that most people who ride the train really don't care one way or the other. Okay? Well, now that's okay, a we're losing that battle, zone. pal. We're losing that battle. Nothing's you happening. You the MTA, they're Nothing's giving you a car. Nothing's well, happening. Well, what I can't believe I say, wait is a that second. this is a legislative wait a second. issue. Solution. We should be Solution. able to vote. Solution. Solution. Get every smoker out there who rides the MTA 
chip in a couple of bucks, buy your own car, hitch it onto the damn train, and come on in. And that's what I do. That's what I do. We'll be back in just a minute to talk to the rest of these people. Let's, uh, let's go to our audience members. You, sir, you've been patiently waiting there. Okay, name is Alex. Hi, Alex. Okay. I think it's very unfair when you have visitors come over your home and to be very arrogant and start smoking in someone else's home. I never... Or if you have passengers in your car and they start smoking, if they want to smoke in their own home while they're outside in their own car, well, I think it's very rude. People get in your car to smoke in your home and I think that they should be outlawed and they should ask permission first is what you're saying in other words if i have... come to your house and you don't smoke i simply say alex uh, i'm a smoker can i smoke you say i'd really appreciate if you didn't i don't want my uh, sofa to smell like cigarettes i say do you mind if i stand on your porch and i smoke out there while i talk well, to you i'd, sometimes I'd be that polite kind of spot. I'd, no and sometimes they'll say no, well you don't if you have want to, to. No, if the guest is polite you can be polite all right i, I would never impose my bad habit on someone else but I still want the right to have my bad habit. My grandmother said he's old. He's still alive. My father's all right. I'm all right. So what's wrong with smoking him once in a while? Doesn't hurt anybody. My father's still alive. My grandmother's still alive. She's been smoking. How old's your father? My father's forty-something years old. I should hope the hell he's still alive. Yeah. Well, my grandmother smoked around him the whole time. He's still all right. No problems. And I'm all right. Are you sure you're all right? <laughs> I'm positive. Are you all right? Well, I, my grandfather smoked to 101. My Uncle George is still alive, smoking at 94. Aunt Beth smoked till 90. So and my up? father smoked to 86. And that's no. the logic... No. I, Mort, that's the logic that proves that driving while drunk doesn't cause accidents, because a lot of people do it and live a long time. Well, you're right. You're right. Go ahead, man. Hi, Mort. I'm just wondering, uh, the professor up here, he seems so nonchalant. He's very quiet tonight. Yeah, very, very quiet. Uh, I uh, wanted I'm you just to wondering, uh, up on this guy. You know, his heart doesn't seem to be in it, so I'm just wondering, in any way, has he ever received or is receiving any payment from the tobacco industry? Uh oh Unfortunately not, uh, but I will tell you this. I have smoked cigars since I'm 13. I'm and now... He's 18 now. I'm... <laughs> Look I'm now 73, <laughs> and according to my doctor, I'm in excellent health. I don't need payment from the tobacco industry. I just happen to enjoy cigars. That's why I smoke them. Now, if you uh, feel disturbed by my smoking cigars, and, and you object, sir. Uh, I don't know. You seem very... Well, I have always... I, I want to try this life. young lady right here. Give her a chance. I've always thought What's for the first thing, <laughs> My name's Tammy, and I'm a non-smoker. Hi, Sammy. Tammy. Tammy. Okay. Hi, Tammy. Non-smoker. You should smoke because you have a lot of excess air. <laughs> <laughs> That's first. Second is if a, a smoking person dies and the family can sue the smoking industry, can a drug a drug addict family sue the government? <laughs> Thank you.